那这场演讲呢，我们呃欢迎到那个我们香港社群好朋友，我们 Tony 哥来分享一下他的这个这个 Build a Commerce 有多么的，不是不是，你是走哈位的模式哦、喔。好了，反正就是就是就是要分享一下他他他在香港那边做 DevSecOps 相关呃 Engineer 的职位啊，他的一些。比如这个 Kubernetes 的一些呃经验啊，然后给大家做一个分享。那因为他这场的的方式会采预录的方式，那我先请他做个自我介绍，然后我们就播一下影片。那如果说你现在你你待会有任何的 Q&A， 你可以直接上 YouTube 去询问他相关的问题，这样好不好？嗯 ，Tony。OK， 呃、uh, ，Can you hear me？Yes。OK， 呃、uh, ，Good afternoon everyone。I'm Tony. I am from Hong Kong. I'm a DevSec of engineer, so it would be great to share with you guys today. Ah, no. Oh, just good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good. Now, let's play his presentation. Wait a minute. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm. Today, I'm going to talk about building Kubernetes the cl cluster the hard way. Uh, may I introduce myself a bit? I'm Tony. I'm from Hong Kong, and as a, I'm working as a Des DevOps engineer. Currently, I'm active in different open source community, including SIGCOM. So today, I'm expecting the target audience to have basic knowledge of Linux and Kubernetes. Uh, it would be great if you have experience of setting up Kubernetes. So today our target is to build a functional and actually high Kubernetes without using any tools like uh, QBADM or KOps. So here's our Kubernetes configuration. Uh, we are going to use 1.24.2 version and our CRI is using the CRIO developed by Red Hat. Our IPTV proxy mode will be IPVS instead of the regular IP tables mode. So let's talk about our, our cluster environment. Uh, for our environment, it will be great if you have another Kubernetes cluster booster by KubeADM for reference. And then you are expect to have a network network load balancer. You can do it by uh, setting up and uh, the VM with x ray fuzzy, and or you can use the cloud load ba network load balancer if you are have using the cloud VM. So in total, we are having six VM with uh, Ubuntu twenty point oh four OS. SOS, and then we are having free control plane and free working node. Network should be unlocked between all VM, and our VM hardware spec will be two virtual CPU with two gigabyte RAM. And we are using the, here's the port network and also the service network. So some important things to know before you restart. So make sure you perform the whole the step on all the control plane. Remember all before moving to the next step. And also you should perform all step on related to Q Kubernetes and also CLIO on all nodes. So we'll start with some basic setup. We'll first install the CLIO and some and the related tools. So you can just check out CLIO.io to for the details type of, of install the tools. So here I will just skip it and here we will install some package include I will just list out the package we need to install and we'll enable and start the service link after install. And then we'll install the cube controller and also the kubenet. So before we install, we'll enable some of the kernel modules. Uh, we'll install the bridge net, net filter, so the bridge uh, network will be 
able to call the IP table and also other than that, other than that filter. And also we have the IPVS kernel module, including the IPVS, IPVS RL, the RL uh, source IP. And also we'll, after enable some the, of the kernel module and we'll just convert the sys control. We'll uh, enable the bridge net, uh, net filter to call the IP table and also the ARB tables. And also we are enabling the IPV we found the IP forwarding. After config the sys control and and the kernel module will and they're up and running. We'll have to download the binaries, including the Kubernetes, the Kube controller. Uh, we can download it from the uh, GitHub, and then you will find the table to download. And after download the binary, uh, the table, and then you can extract it and put the binaries inside in the path, uh, path executable path. So uh, after after uh, preparing the Kubernetes and also the crypt control, we are going to uh, start with generating the certificate. So we are going to generate certificate with a CFSSL. CFSSL, sorry. Uh, it is developed by Cloudflare and also we can just convert the certificate generating with JSON easily instead of remembering as branch of OpenSSL uh, flag. So we have uh, some CA to generate, including the ETCD CA, the front policy CA, and also the Kubernetes CA. Uh, we are going to generate some certificates with the ETCD CA. Uh, first, we have the ETCD server cert. So uh, the ETCD will be able to listen with HTTPS and also the ETCD peer search. So we have our uh, HTTP MTLS between the ETCD cluster, uh, the member within the cluster. And then we have the uh, client side for QB API server to access the ETCD cluster. And then we have the QB Kubernetes CA to generate a branch of that. Uh, first, we have the QB API server to have uh, its server set. Just make sure it, uh, the SAN will be matching the IP, uh, the surface IP, the cluster IP, uh, the cluster IP and the uh, host name, its own host name, and also the, the surface host name inside the cluster. And also, don't remember, don't forget to add the uh, uh, control, uh, the load balancer, host name, and also IP. And then the QB API server, Kubernetes client cert will be used for the QB API to communicate with the Kubernetes. And also we have the Kubernetes, QB controller manager, and also the QB scheduler client cert for for accessing the QB API server. Last but not least, we have the main client set for the for us to access the cluster with the QB control. And then next, we will have the uh, front policy CA to generate the front policy client so that the QB API server should, could be able to policy some of the API requests to the backend API service. And then we are having having a, a, an RSA key key pair on each control plane to assign the service account JWT token. So with these two open SSL command, you can generate a pair of of uh, RSA key. We are having uh, one key pair per node uh, per control plane, and then we will distribute the proper key to other the other control plane and while keeping the private key in the, in the same node. So after that, we have the generator certificates. Some of them do, would be need to embed into the, or link into the control, config file. 
So we have uh, around four. We have three uh, config, kip config file for each control plane, we, including the kip control, controller manager, kip scheduler, and kip lift. So, and then we have the Q, uh, the admin config for ourselves to access with access with kip control. Just remember to generate all Kubernetes config for all the nodes. So after that, we have we can start to configure the kubelet to start and start the service. So for kubelet, well, most of the configuration will be inside the uh, kubelet config file now. For now, so we have the static port file. Uh, the kubelet will will start all the port in uh, port YML inside the kube, the static port file directory. So we are going to have etcd, QB API server, uh, QB controller manager, and also the QB scheduler inside or inside the, the directory of our control plane. And then we are ha having the cluster uh, cluster DNS IP, so which will be the surface surface of the core DNS, which is a hard code uh, IP. Just make sure when you are starting the coordinates, you are having the same IP matching this. So up next, we are having the cluster CH path for facilitating the client from the client certificate, which will be matching with the QB API server, uh, Kubernetes client, client slot. And then uh, we are, and then we are going to configure the Kubernetes system D service. In the system D in the system D service file, we are specifying the QB config so that the Kubernetes can con connect to the QB API server later. After the API server is running, and then we'll specify a Kubernetes config file, which is we just config. And then lastly, we are specifying the CLI runtime. The CLI uh, runtime must be uh, remote as Docker is deprecated. And then we have the CLI endpoint, uh, which is CLI O socket for, for this case. If you are using some other CLI, you can just specify the socket here. And then it will use another CLI. So after the Kubernetes, Kubernetes is start and number up and running, and we have to. We are going to move on to the ETCD. For the ETCD, uh, we are having the MT, uh, MTLS, and we use the client of application, client set of application. So you can see we have a, a key pair for server listening, and also we have the enable the client set authentication and we verify the client set with a trusted CA file. And then we are having a cluster, a cluster discovery configuration and we have the, uh, we advise of the, both the client URL and also the peer URL for order to know how to connect to this, connect to this node. And then we have the cluster token for the for the others to make sure they are in the same cluster. In this case, we are using static discovery and which we specify all the, uh, most of the nodes in the config file, in the, in the, uh, con in the flag. Next, we have the uh, cluster peering authentication. We are using key pair, key pair to perform client authentication client set authentication and also we and we are verifying each other using the uh, CA in although the CA you can use a uh, different C, CA instead of the uh, instead of the same CA with the of the server but in this case we we're just keeping it simple and we, we are using the same one After configuring the ETCD and make sure the ETCD cluster is up and running, we are, 
we are moving to the QB API server. So first of all, we are generating the encryption configuration. Uh, by using encryption configuration, the QB API server will be able to encrypt your secret in uh, instead of play, putting a plain test in the in the ETCD. So uh, we have some different uh, provider for encryption, including identity, which is just no encryption secret box, AES, GCM, AES, CBC, and also external KMS, uh, such as GCP KMS or AWS KMS. So for the, the QB API server will be encrypt every three. Uh, every new secret with the first provider it found in this list. In this case, we are using identity. And then when uh, the QB API server needs to decrypt the secret, it will try, uh, try from the bottom to the, try from the top to the bottom one by one until it is successfully decrypted. So after setting up the configuration file, encryption configuration, uh, we are moving to the uh, port. First, we have the authentication configuration. We are using the node one. The mode will be node and RBAC node for the QBnet and the RBAC for the regular usage. We are also uh, verifying the client with uh, CSR and also, and then we are having a con encryption provider config, which is uh, config before. And then we are having a ETCD client configuration. We are verifying the ETCD with a specific CA. And also you, we are authenticating the ETCD with a, client, a, a pair of client shirt. Lastly, we are having the ETCD servers with a branch of IP URL. And then we are having a Cuban Red client uh, configuration. We are using, in this case, we are also using a client certificate authentication. And then we are configured the front policy client. You can see we are using a front policy key pair, which uh, and also we have some uh, from policy configuration request configuration. And then down to here, we have configured the service account token signing. We have uh, spe specified the issuer. And also we have a branch of private uh, property for replying the service account token. And also we have a private key to sign the service account token. And then we have a plus service cluster IP range and all the service with type of cluster IP would be having um, an IP from this range. Last but not least, we are configured the QB API server listening and config. We are listening on 6443 and our we are listed with HTTPS with the uh, key pair. So uh, when the API server is ready, we can also move to the config controller manager. For the controller manager, first of all, we provide the QB config, so it can connect to the uh, QB API server, and then we'll select what our controller controller should. Uh, should be started by the controller manager. So we'll start all the stable one and also the bootstrap signer and also the club to token cleaner, which is all experiment for now. And then we have the cluster configuration, uh, the cluster name and also the cluster certificate signing uh, key pair, and which is the CA, the QB, QB office CA. Uh, it will be allowing the uh, QBNet to perform a uh, sub rotation for itself and also uh, some other sub rotation uh, for the component. And then up next, we have uh, 
specify the cluster's cluster port IP, uh, which is 10.64, and also the surface cluster IP range, and which is 10.51. Lastly, we have the uh, port policy from policy uh, DA to verify which is it the is the request from the uh, QB API server, and also the service account key pair to key to private key to sign the service account token. Then we. Uh, when the controller manager is uh, is providing the deployment and stable set, and then we have we are now moving to the scheduler, which are uh, assigning the port to different nodes. The Qubicon, Qubit scheduler is rather simple. We are just specifying the Qubit config, uh, the listening listening address, and and that we will be able to start and running. So. Uh, after starting the uh, ETCD QB API server, QB controller manager, and the QB scheduler, then we are coming down to the uh, to the almost uh, ready to use Kubernetes cluster. So when your cluster is almost ready, now we have, we are config some node on the node object inside the cluster. So to prevent the pod being assigned to the cluster, we are editing the node object. We are having a label for the control plane node, which is node row kubernetes.io slash control plane. With this label, you, when you are typing kube control get node, you will see this uh, this node row having a row of control plane. And then you can use a client to disable a post scheduling to the control plane. You can see on the right side in the in the in the screen cap. Uh, when you have a key with a uh, not, not row uh, document be not file control slash control plane, and then the effect will be no scheduled. Then the port will not be scheduled to this this not. Lastly, we are configuring the uh, QB, QB policy so that uh, when you are ha having a cluster IP policy, we'll, you will be ha able to resolve to the real port. Policy to the real port. So uh, this is just a simple con demon set you can find uh, later on the GitHub. And lastly, we are having a Coordinates just follow the guide from the coordinates official, and then you will be able to done. And last, lastly, we are for now we are having a full functional Kubernetes cluster. Thank you. Hi, Tony. Uh, you know. Tony, wait. Tony, you know. Oh, sorry, too bad. I'm good. Okay. 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 对不起啊，我这个我人生只做过这么一次而已，然后接下来我都不干了。<笑>他那个，我我我不得不说，他那个 TLS 真真心真心麻烦，真的非常非常麻烦。千万千千万万不要土干那个那个，就是 Tony 这个这个这个所有的这样 round down。没事，没事，别做。Tony， 给你给你、呃，你你是不是有东西要讲？对，两个，嗯。首先就是啊、呃，感谢 Cloud Infer Lab， 就是今呃这次给我给我提供了这这么多的 VM， 感谢高正在准备 c o s c u p 的时候还在还在为我提供 trouble shooting。对啊、呃，还有就是啊 s i c o n 要来了，对，九月的时候，对大家有有空的话可以过呃来赞助一下。啊、呃，可以的话也可以买。今年好像没有个人赞助票
。对，你有 OSVP 都可以进去了，今年。好，就是这样。好，就这样。嗯。好，现场。对，感谢大家。有没有那个问通灵问题的、啊？我我这边是有个问题啊，你你你像真的。自己，你们你在香港是真的把这个自己一一个一步一步把它建起来，然后丢给客户使用哦。啊、呃，我真的建了起来，现现在还在靠一份在里头。哦哦，不不是丢给客户嘛？因为因为我在看完步骤，我真的这个我我我没有这个胆子。<笑>你啊，你自己你自己如果要用这个 build 那个 Kubernetes 的 tool， 你像你你比较常见的是用什么？啊？你如果如果说叫你要 build 一个。这个 Kubernetes 的一个平台起来的话，你们你你你自己通常会用什么？我自己建的话，应该，然后里头就是没什么都没有，基本上来说，我只是研究 Kubernetes 这个玩意，哦，就做而已。你这画面现在是那个郭靖那一座嘛，对不对？我看，对啊，然后就还在。哇、wow, 哦，啊，这个欢迎大家，如果如果有要玩那个 Cloud Infrared， 哎、欸，如果大家如果对 Cloud Infrared 的使用有很好奇，还是想要试试看的话，你可以找我们在那个 Cloud Native 台湾 User Group 的 Facebook 上面有上面有个连接，然后你可以去找到申请，然后 support 的话就是他那个门口那位，就是他，就是他，啊，你就会感受到那个全球电信级的 Open Stack 的威力，就是他，找他，找他，对，对吧？我没讲错，你没有讲错，对。有有讲错啊？那哦，<笑>你是说你坏掉啊？没没事啊，就这个感谢通尼这个的分享啊。那如果我们也欢迎这个大家多多去利用一下社群资源。那如果说你对 sponsor 啊有兴趣的话，也可以，无论是钱啊，无论是计划专案，比如说像通尼，他这次演讲看起来是用用 cloud infra lab 嘛，对不对？是吧？嗯，你你你。你你你这次研究全部都是用 cloud cloud infra lab 在做实作，对不对？啊、呃，对，对啊，就是可以拿来试试看、玩玩看啊。这个这个是一个不错的东东。好，所以看有没有 Q&A。如果 Q&A 找，如果有一些疑问想要继续去互动的话，可以在 YouTube 找 Tony 去做呃发问啊。嗯，好，那看，那我们感谢 Tony 的分享，谢谢。好，谢谢。